This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on, guys? So, in this video, I want to talk a little bit about learning a, a front end framework, a JavaScript framework because I'm for a few reasons. One is I'm, I'm often asked, you know, which framework should I use? People are basically sending me emails that are they seem anxious about which framework they should learn because it's going to be just a devastating mistake if they choose the wrong one. And, and that's just not the case. Uh, and the reason for that is most of them and I'm, I'm basically going to talk about the big three, which are Vue, Angular and React. Most of them do the same thing uh, you know they do it in a different way they have different syntax different build process but the overall concepts are pretty much the same and i'm going to talk about uh, some of those a little later but i think that more the more important thing to worry about is do you know enough javascript you want to focus on learning the core fundamentals of javascript and i don't just mean what a variable is what an array is a function of course you need to know that but go further and look at it, at least ES6. You know, you want to look at promises, you want to look at HTTP requests, high order array methods, things like map, filter, uh, reduce. You, know, you want to kind of learn that stuff before moving to a framework. And I actually have a video of about 10 different things that, that I suggest learning before learning a framework. Because I think far too many people just jump into it too quick. And there's there's a few problems with that. One of them is it's hard to distinguish what is part of the framework and what is actually JavaScript. Um, and and an, uh, an example of that is the, the map method, which is a JavaScript high order array method that's used in React to basically loop through an array and then output a list in JSX. And a lot of people that just jump into React too quick, they think that map is part of React and it's not, it's, it's JavaScript. And this, this is why people think it's so important on which framework you choose, because they think it, they're so different, you know, like if you learn React and then, I don't know, React goes away, which I don't think it is going to, but if it did, then it'd be like, you know, I have to spend a year learning Vue or whatever the next framework is. When in reality, if you just really know JavaScript well, you can switch frameworks very easily and it's not a big deal. Um, so just keep that in mind. I know there's there's all these videos on YouTube that are react versus view, you know, what should I choose? And it's like they make drama out of picking a friggin framework uh, and it's really it's not needed. Um, what's needed is your is your is learning JavaScript. And there's a lot of ways to do that. You know, if, um, of course, I'm going to pr promote my own course, which is, uh, you know, modern JavaScript from the beginning on Udemy. I'll put a link in the description, but there's a lot of good courses out there. Um, I just actually signed up to Front End Masters as a, an instructor, Kyle Simpson. I'm sure a lot of you guys know who he is. Uh, I think he's, he's also known as Getify. He has some really good courses that are like deep dives into JavaScript. And I'm not saying you need to really dive deep in order to move on to a framework. But even after you start learning a framework, still work on your 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 regular just vanilla JavaScript skills, you know. Um, you should never stop learning JavaScript, especially where it, it's always changing. There's always new things being added. You want to keep up with that stuff. Um, and then I think another way to, to really sharpen your skills is algorithms. And not everybody likes algorithms. I, I really don't, but I do see how they are. They're very helpful in learning. You know, you, you don't really use exact algorithms in, in your work, like in your practical projects but you learn different methods and different ways to solve problems that will really help you in your actual work. Um, so it's a, it's really good practice. And there's a lot of different sites out there, you know, uh, free code camp, code fights. Uh, I can't really remember the names of them, but there's a lot of sites where you can do challenges. Um, some, some where you can even, even go against other people, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's another way that you can you can practice your JavaScript. There's some courses, algorithm courses out there, um, job interview preparation, because a lot of job interviews, you'll have to solve certain problems, certain certain uh, challenges and stuff like that. Now, as far as um, app, uh, as far as uh, what the hell was I talking about? Uh, framework. So as far as framework uh, 
concepts, I think that there's two really important concepts. There's components and there's state. I think those are really, really important to, to really understand um, when it comes to front-end frameworks. So components are basically just encapsulated pieces of your user interface. So for instance, a nav bar or a search form or a register form. These are different components in your user interface. And of course, you can have components within components. Now, before front-end frameworks, we basically had our HTML, our CSS, and our JavaScript. It was all separate. It was really monolithic and kind of messy. Uh, unless you followed a really strict pattern. And frameworks, they basically fix that. That's, that's one of the big reasons for frameworks, is to have a consistent way to write front-end code, front-end, not even just JavaScript, just front-end websites, applications, U UIs. Um, so you want to start to think of your user interfaces in pieces, in those components, instead of this one HTML file, CSS, JavaScript, like we used to. Uh, and then you have state, which is your data. Now you have component level state, but then you also have state that you want to basically share across components. So for instance, blog posts. If you have an array of blog posts, you're going to have to work with those posts with different components. Now you could pass it around, pass, pass data you know, through components, through props or whatever. Um, and that gets really messy, so especially with large applications. So that's where um, app level state comes in. And, and there are some frameworks that have this built in, such as the Context API and React. Um, you can you, you know use services in Angular, but you also have state uh, state libraries or state management libraries that are great for this, like Redux, like Vuex, um, NgRx. Each framework kind of has their, their main state manager that's used, but there's a lot of them out there. And this allows you to basically have one store for your data or for your state, and you can access that stuff from any component in your application. And you can also have actions that you can fire off, so a button click, a form submission, something like that, where you can then change something in your state and then have it go down to whatever components need it. Uh, it's kind of a corny analogy, but I like to think of my application as, as a bunch of components and then a cloud that, that kind of hovers above the components. That's my state. And the state can rain down data into components that need it. We can also fire off actions, which I guess you could kind of think of as like a rocket that shoots into the cloud, into the state, and then causes something else to, to rain down. It's kind of a corny analogy, but that's kind of the picture that I have in my head when I think about components and state. And uh, I don't know, maybe that can help some of you guys understand it that are just getting into this. But, um, you know, my main point here is it, the, fr the framework itself isn't that important. Um, because again, they all kind of work the same. What's important is that you understand JavaScript and also understand some of the core components or, or core concepts of um, front end frameworks like components and state. Um, but, you know, that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to kind of address that because I've been getting a lot of emails lately, people like almost in a panic asking me which framework I should use. And I can't really answer that for you. You have to look at each one, take a, a you know, a, a glimpse at each one, look at the syntax and, and see if, if it if you like it, if you think that you can work with it. Um, take a look at in the jobs in your area. The, the React jobs versus the Vue jobs. But again, even if, I mean, that's going to change. And if it does, if you have those core concepts, you'll be able to pick up whatever it is that's being used very easily. All right, so that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.